Good morning, students. Of course, I'm back again with another uh, biology tutorial for class 11 as per CBSE curriculum. So the first unit is about the diversity of living organisms, their classification, you know, the five kingdom classification and everything else. And of course, the detail of those five kingdoms. So uh, I'm here again. Though I have already done this chapter with my class through the Cisco tutorial, I thought uh, some of you joined me later and I guess there, there, there would be many of you who may not have started or you may want a revision. So I thought I'll make a quick step-by-step -step guide as to how to approach the first chapter. Now let me warn you, a word of caution. The first unit um, is a very typical unit. It is very conventional biology and uh, you have to find things to make it spicier and you know interesting. So go ahead make use of the internet. Today I'm going to share with you some tools and techniques on the net by which this entire unit can become very interesting and uh, very very engaging for all of us. So uh, what do we have over here? Let me just show you the syllabi. So this is the syllabus. This is the first unit that is diversity of the living organisms in which today we are going to deal with a quick step-by-step -step guide to the first chapter where we will be solving these entire basics of the living world. You know, what is biodiversity? What is the species concept? You know, why do you have three domains of life? What are these three domains? Who proposed to propose them? You know, what is binomial nomenclature, etc., etc., etc. So we are going to commence with the same. Now, just a quick, uh, you know, guide. Every unit in the NCRT begins with this kind of an introduction. So it's very important that you refer to the introduction at the beginning. And of course, every unit has uh, you know, has an abridged dedication to a scientist. So for this unit, we have Ernest Mayer. It's very important for your NEET MCQs and for your CBSE MCQs to know at least the scientists who have been covered in the NCRT. So why Ernest Mayer? Because Ernest Mayer is credited with the concept of the biological species or the biological species concept. He gave us the modern concept. And of course, he is a very decorated scientist. So I leave you to the reading of this scientist's contribution. By the way, NCRTs are very commonly available on the NCRT website. For your benefit, I'm going to drop in a link of this first chapter's free latest 2019-20 PDF, which was made available last year, which I am also referring to. So here we have the first chapter. These are the key concepts covered. Another approach to any NCRT chapter could be that instead of starting with the chapter from the beginning, whenever you are doing your self study, it is always better to go down to the end of the chapter, like I'm scrolling over here, and you know, you find a, a very precise summary. You know? So this summary gives you a condensed preview of the entire chapter. Just going through the summary helps you clarify what all topics are of immense importance from every chapter, right? And sometimes there may be some important NCRT keyword which may not be that prevalent in the text, but it figures out somewhere in the summary. So please ensure that you read the summary before you start the chapter. So let's begin the chapter. One, the living world for class 11, CBSE. Of course, the first paragraph is about how complex and how beautiful the living world is and how the dynamic balance is there, but very delicate. So what do you consider as living? How do you define some organism to be living or with something as with life? So conventionally, you are looking for some distinctive characteristics which are mentioned over here. So I am going to mark it very quickly over here for you. 
So the text tells you that living organisms grow, they can reproduce, they have the ability to perceive and sense any changes in their external environment and then respond towards it. And they have this sense of consciousness. They, they are always aware of what is happening in their immediate surroundings. And of course, other features like cellular reactions, metabolism, the ability to self-organize, the ability to have life processes, etc., etc. And sure, this you may find based upon your previous knowledge skills of class 10 life processes. Remember, you had an introduction, should be fresh in your mind, you've just finished your class 10 exams. So, your job is to look at the bold phrases of the NCRT, like all living organisms grow. So, what is growth? Growth is cell division. Growth is increase or enlargement of the cell size and the cell mass. So, if the living organism is undergoing active cell divisions, which results in the increase of height, in the increase of girth or diameter, there is cell elongation, cell enlargement and then cell differentiation. That is, the actively dividing cells can very quickly attain a specific role or function for specialization. Right, that is associated with growth. So I'm sure you will undergo a quick reading of all these points. Of course, growth can also be you know seen in in vitro cultures. So vitro means test tube conditions or lab conditions. So growth of living organisms which are made up of cells happens in vitro as well as in vivo. Right. So one must remember that increase or an escalation in the body mass is considered as growth. Now, non-living objects also grow. They do increase in body mass. However, this kind of growth of non-living objects happens because they are accumulating or collecting material on the surface. But living organisms, they grow from inside, right? Because the cells have the ability to replicate their cytoplasms and the nuclei. So, this amount of close reading of the NCRT text is the basis of championing NEAT as well as CBSE. Of course, the second concept is reproduction. The production or the synthesis of progeny, offspring or the like young ones possessing features more or less similar to those of the parents. This process is reproduction. You remember class 10, how do organisms reproduce? modes of reproduction, whether asexual or sexual, all those modes have been defined over here, given, you have been given a review over here, right? Now, there is a catch. Reproduction cannot be an all-inclusive defining characteristics of living organisms. Why? Because let's say an organism is infertile. They are not having this ability to reproduce and form young live ones. Does that mean that they cease to be or they stop to be a living organism? Well, so that is the catch. Reproduction is not an essential life process, but reproduction is required for the continuity of species. Mark this phrase, write it down somewhere. Continuity of species, we are going to come back to it again. And then the most important concept of all living organisms is that the cells undergo metabolism. A number of catabolic and anabolic reactions are going on. Again, this is a class 10th concept that a number of small monomeric units are coming together, consuming energy in the form of ATP, or a big polymer is broken down in the presence or absence of oxygen to release energy in the form of ATP. So, a lot of metabolic reactions are taking place in the presence of biological catalysts called enzymes, and because these chemical reactions and conversions are taking place in cells. This is active metabolism and living organisms do show metabolism. But remember, non no non-living object, you know, it exhibits metabolism. So this is one line which is very important. Now, you may consider this, that we discussed a term in vitro previously. What if, if the cells are growing, multiplying, enlarging, in test tube conditions, in a lab, outside the body of an individual, can those cells also show metabolism in chemical reactions? Well, yes, of course. But metabolism, which is isolated, that is in vitro, 
right? That cannot be considered as true metabolism. That's isolated. It's a part of a living cell, but it is being maintained in a test tube or a regulated lab environment. So the typical metabolism that we are talking about here is in vivo, inside the body of an organism. So you have two new terms to search for, in vitro and in vivo. I'm sure you're going to reply to me in the comment section about it. So what else? Consciousness is the defining property of any living organism. We sense the environment. We sense the presence of light, water, humidity, temperature changes, pollutants. You know, there are seasonal changes. Some animals are seasonal breeders. They have, um, you know, estrus cycles. Well, we are going to talk of all these concepts in class 12. So every organism is aware of its surroundings. And he or she is aware of themselves as well. This is consciousness. This ability to think, to be aware of, this is consciousness. So, uh, we can, you know, just leave this to you. That You can just quickly go through all of these points. So, I would just bring you to the crux that biology is the story of life on Earth. And it is the story of evolution of living organisms on Earth past, present and future. So biology is a very dynamic subject. Always break the terms in bio. Bio means life. Logi comes from the word logos which means to study. So this is the story of life on planet Earth. And of course life is very dynamic. It is not stagnant and it keeps changing forms. And now we come to which important MCQ kind of questions you should be aware of. For example, what do you understand by the term biodiversity? Split the term. Bio means life or life forms. Diversity means different forms available. So it is the sum total of all the organisms present on Earth. Now, this NCRT is a 2019-20 edition, as you can see. However, they have given the described range of 1.7 to 1.8 million. So now I'm going to give you a comparative figure over here. This is what the journal Nature tells us, that the number of species on Earth is somewhere estimated to be around 8.7 million. And I'm sure you're going to find these kind of discrepancies in a number of reference books, you know, and you may get confused that what if ma'am in NEET this kind of a question happens. Trust me, in NEET you do get figure based questions. So even memorizing the figures becomes very important. How, which figure will be correct? So this is the catch. When the NCRT mentions this figure of biodiversity or the total number of living organisms to be 1.7 to 1.8 million, they are talking about the documented species. Species which stand described. But of course, as we keep on discovering the existence of new species, this statistics tends to become very variable. So a very trusted source like nature, if their study indicates that, you know, about more than 80% of the species are still undiscovered by mankind, you can actually never have a fixed number for the total estimate. So it is always um, important to memorize the NCRT figures for your NEET and for your CBSE, right? And that brings us to the point that all the living organisms present on this earth, they are of different types, but they must be showing some similarities with respect to each other again. So in the coming class, I'm going to discuss about the concepts of species, nomenclature, taxonomy, and a lot of taxonomical aids and tools. And that is going to be the tough part. So I end this brief class at this point and I will share another lecture with you soon. Take care.